Welcome to the commonly used Excel charts and functions video series. All of our bite-sized videos are around five minutes to make your learning simpler. We suggest watching each video first and then again following along the second time. In lesson one, we will go over how to make basic charts in Excel. First thing we need before we can create any type of chart is some data. Sometimes you'll have to enter your own data, which is what we'll do today. I already have my quarter and sales labels in my workbook, and I'll just have to fill in the rest of the numbers. One of the most useful features of Excel is its autofill function. I can type in the first couple quarter labels, highlight them, and then drag down from the bottom right hand corner, and you can see Excel autofilled quarter three and four for me. Now for sales, I just want to generate some random numbers, so I'm going to use a function called randBetween. When I enter the function and select it, you can see it prompts me to choose two numbers, a bottom and a top. What this function will do is generate random numbers between the range that we give it. You can select whichever two numbers you would like. Again, drag down from the bottom right hand corner to fill the rest of the cells. Now, one thing when you're using round between is whenever you press enter, all the numbers change and we don't want that. So what we're going to do is highlight all four numbers, right click, press copy, right click again, go to paste special and paste values. So as you can see, the numbers are still within the range that we gave the function, but no longer is the formula in the function bar at the top here. Now we have one last step before we can start to make the graphs, and that is to change the sales numbers into currency. We're going to highlight all four of those numbers and press the dollar sign in the middle here. It's important to add this dollar sign because it'll automatically be transferred to all our charts which will add greater detail. We also want to get rid of these trailing zeros because they add unnecessary clutter to our graph. Press this button here and you can see they disappear. Now that we have our data, we can start to make the graphs. So for our first one, what we're going to do is highlight the data we want included and go to the insert tab. You can see in the middle here, there are a bunch of options for different graphs. We're going to choose the first one and go to 2D column. Now to move the chart that was created, you simply just drag it around the workbook and to resize it, pull up and down on the corners. Now you might be noticing that there are certain elements of this chart that are missing. Maybe a graph title, axis labels, and you're right by that. These elements of the graph are just as important as the data itself. This allows the graph to be freestanding, which means that anyone who looks at the graph can understand the message that it's trying to convey. To add these elements, double click on the graph and choose the Add Chart Elements button. As you can see, there are many options we can choose from. We're just gonna add primary horizontal, and primary vertical axis titles. To edit the titles, select the placeholders, delete, and type what you want. I'm going to put quarter on my x-axis and 2021 sales on my y-axis. Now for the title, it's the same way to edit, but you want to make sure when you're choosing a title, you choose something that's not only descriptive, but excites your audience. I'm going to go 2021 sales by quarter. Now you can see that with the clear title and axis labels, the chart is now freestanding and is easily understood. Another way you can customize your chart is by playing around with the text. If I highlight the title, you can see that I have options to change the font, the size, I can bold it, and even change the color. I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger so that the title stands out more. And there we go. We have our first chart made. Now let's move on to our second one. 
So again, I'm going to highlight the data I want included and go to the Insert tab. This time, I'm going to choose the second option and do a 2D line chart. I'm going to move this one just a little bit to the side and make it a little bit smaller. Now you might notice as well for this graph that those necessary freestanding elements are also missing. Another way we can add them to our chart is by double clicking and using this green plus size plus sign on the right hand side. Here you can see it gives us all the same options as before and we will select access titles and they were automatically added. I'm going to use the same titles that I did before and using the same process just to select the placeholders and delete and type what I would like. And I can use the same title again because it's both descriptive and exciting to the audience. Now another way I can customize my graph is by changing the color. If I double click on the line, I can see a paintbrush appears on the right hand side. If I press that, it gives me an option to change the style and the color. If I press color and scroll down, you can see all these color options here. I'm going to go with green. And there we are. Our second graph is now done. Let's move on to our third and final. Again, highlight the data you want included, go to the insert tab, and this time select the third option and go 2D pi. I'm going to move this one to the bottom. Now I want you guys to take a minute and make this chart freestanding by adding all the necessary elements to check your understanding. While it is important to know how to make all of these charts, it's also important to know the differences between each type. The column chart is used for comparison since its endpoints are easily compared while the line chart is used for continuous data because it displays trends over time. Lastly, the pie chart represents a part and whole relationship with each slice representing a percentage of the pie. Thank you so much for watching and tune in next time where we will be talking more about the pie chart.